morning, church. It's so good to see you here. And all those listening online, thank you for uh, tuning in and, and listening. It's so interesting because people used to tune into their TV, and now they're tuning into little things in their hands called iPhones and Android phones and galaxies or whatever you call all these things. Um, but I, th I thank God for the technology. It's been said that it's the uh, greatest curse, but also the greatest blessing. Greatest curse because it could be a huge distraction, but it's also a blessing because you can uh, get the Word of God right through your phone, which is really, really neat. So this morning, I want to talk to you about getting a fresh perspective. And you know, when we think about New Year's and the, and the year, and people do New Year's resolutions and all those things, but what is a New Year's resolution? Something that goes in one year and out the other. Well, a couple people got a couple there. All right, so how about this one? Youth is when you're allowed to stay up on New Year's Eve. Middle age is when you're forced to. I don't know. For me, I was definitely forced to. The fireworks were going off, and I wanted to be asleep. I don't care about seeing the ball drop. I've seen it, been there, done that. Well, not in person, but on TV. And... Uh, it's the same every year. Okay? That's it. So uh, midnight, I want to be in bed. I want to be asleep, hopefully. So all of that is good, though. If you like it, stay up, do it. And this year, what I want to tell you is that when, you come, when it comes to New Year's resolutions and all that kind of stuff, hey, if there's some change you want to make in your life, you know, just give it over to the Lord Ask Him for strength in order to do those things. New Year's resolutions are not bad. They can be good. I do know that the gyms, uh, they, they increase in their memberships on the first week. And the gym is full on the first month. And then it just slowly gets less and less and less and less for the, for the year. Um, but maybe you're a workout warrior and you get it all year. If you have a, a new workout plan, I pray that it will last for the whole year. I really do. In Jesus' name. Well, anyways, and I'm serious about that because I have, uh, I'll just say, I have tried it every, not every year, but year, in years past, I'm going to do this, do that, and I have failed every single time. I pray that you will not fail this year in your workout plan, and your diet plan, or whatever it is you're doing. You chomp down on those rice cakes, more power to you. Praise God. You, I hope you get it, and you get it right. Uh, I made me a deal this morning, talking about rice cakes, I made me a deal this morning with my nephew Chase back there for Christmas. He made me special some uh, chocolate chip, homemade chocolate chip granola bars. So, so good. So now uh, he's got a new job this year to be my supplier for, uh, with chocolate chip granola bars. And, uh, oh, don't worry, I, I, I am compensating. I shall compensate. I don't mind when it's that good. Uh, so you, you do the rice cakes, and I will do Chase's chocolate chip granola bars. Hallelujah. All right, so last week, Peter, he gave us a word for 2023, and it was get a new set of lenses. Get a new set of lenses. How many were blessed by that word last week? Amen. Very, very good. We had a powerful time, wonderful ministry time at the end as well. And church, we need a fresh perspective for 2023. I kind of want to launch off of what Peter said last week and get into the word and talking in John 3. And I've preached from John 3 before, and I want to go over a couple of the same things I've gone over before, but then go a little further further than I usually do. So before we do that, let's pray. Father, this morning, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence in this place. I thank you that all distractions are gone and we can focus in our minds and open up our hearts to receive what you tell us by your spirit in your word here this morning. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I looked up the word perspective from the dictionary because, you know, I said to the Lord, I want a new fresh perspective, a new uh, fresh, you know, perspective for me. And so I looked this word up and, and I looked at different dictionaries, but the Britannica dictionary stuck, uh, stood out to me this time. So here's what it is. Number one, a way of thinking about and understanding something such as a particular issue or life in general. 
But then this next one, number two, this really, this, this stuck out to me. A condition in which a person knows which things are important and does not worry or think about unimportant things. In other words, maintaining or keeping your perspective. So see, so many times we get a revelation or we get a new perspective on something, but we don't maintain it. We don't maintain it. And that's why I like that second definition there. It's a condition. And, I, and, and this is a good condition. Normally when someone says, well, this person, he has a condition. It's usually a negative thing. It's a bad thing. No, this is a good thing. I want to be this kind of person that has a perspective and I maintain it. That I have this condition which a person knows which things are important and I don't think about unimportant things. I want to make sure I'm thinking about the important things and the unimportant things are not at the forefront of my mind. But so many times when we run in life and we start going, we start, uh, you know, whether it's work or at home, family life, this or that, we'll get bogged down by the unimportant things many times instead of focusing on what's important, what we should be doing, the things that the Lord is showing us. Maybe we, we read our Bible, we read some scriptures, and the Lord begins to show us something of how we're supposed to change something in our life. And we get focused on that. We get a new perspective and we start going. But then these unimportant things start creeping up and distract us from our mission. Distract us from what God said. Distract us from what we're supposed to do to step out to help somebody else or reach somebody else or to witness to somebody else. Amen? To let our light shine. So in John chapter 3, verse 1, I want to begin reading uh, here, and we'll read the first three verses. It says, There was a man of, of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night, and he said to him, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, I want us to go back to verse 2 there for a moment. Because Nicodemus is coming to Jesus because of the signs. Okay? And he's seeing these signs. And he's, he's wondering. He's got this question going on. How is it? That you can do this. And so, it's something that is bothering him. Because he's seen this, but he, he hasn't been able to put it all together, what's really going on. And so it's bothering him, and he's curious. He needs a new perspective on this. Because right now, his perspective is confusion. He likes what he sees, but he's confused. And I, we know that he likes what he sees. Why? Because he says, Rabbi, you're a teacher come from God. Now, he, he doesn't know that he's the Messiah. He's calling him a teacher. It hasn't been revealed to him. And that's where the confusion, he's like, man, this guy must be a teacher from God. Because nobody can do this stuff. Nobody can change water into wine. Because that's what we read in the chapter before. Nobody can do that. So he's confused, and he's like, wait a minute, I need to go find out. So he approaches him, and he goes. Now in verse 3, it says, Jesus answers, and honestly, <laughs> it made him more confused, I'm sure. He doesn't really get it. But what, and that's because he says, you can't see the kingdom of God unless you're born again. You're not going to see this. In other words, it, it, unless you're born again, you're not going to have that perspective that you need. That's the first step. You've got to be born again. You're not going to see. You're not going to understand. You're going to be perplexed. So many run through life and they're perplexed just looking at the news or this or that or this report. This bad thing that happened over here, bad thing. And they don't understand. Why does that happen? How could that happen? Or why does God allow it to happen? And all of a sudden, we begin to blame God for things he has nothing to do with. 
Because we believe and we've heard and we've been, it's been taught for years and years and years. God is in control. Well, in many times, and I've, we've said it over and over, it's better to say God is in charge. Why? Because he gave the earth to men. That's what Psalm says. In Genesis, he said for man to take dominion of the earth. So we have choice. I'm here with choice. I'm not a puppet. God doesn't control every little thing I do. I'm the pastor, but I could get up and say something that, you know, that is contrary if I wanted to. Do I want to do something contrary to the Word of God? Oh, no. But have ministers gotten up and said something opposite from what the Word says? Oh, yes, they have. They've stood behind, pul behind pulpits boldly speaking their own, their own way of seeing things and not what the Word says. But the word see here, it means perceive. Not with your eyes, not what, what you can see with your eyes, because Nicodemus, he's seeing this. Waters turn into wine. This guy gets healed. That person gets Holy cow, what's going on? He can see it with his natural eye, but he is not perceiving with his spirit. The kingdom of God, it means royalty, rule, or reign. Some scholars say God's imperial rule or God's domain or God's supreme powerful rule. That's the one I like. God's supreme powerful rule. Church, the kingdom of God is his supreme powerful rule on our hearts. That's what the kingdom is. That's where he rules and reigns. We are the temple of God, as Paul said in Corinthians. He said, we're the, we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, therefore, God is reigning on our hearts. So the kingdom of God, it's within us. Look here, Luke 17, just to, just to prove it really quick. Luke 17, verse 20. Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation. In other words, with those natural eyes. You can't see it. Nicodemus, he can't see because he's not born again. Nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. Back to John 3, 3. Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus is giving this answer to Nicodemus, it's probably not the answer that he's looking for, but it's an answer nonetheless. He's more confused. He needs understanding, but he doesn't understand. Verse 4, Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Then Jesus answered, in verse 5, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So now he starts to clarify a little bit more and give a little bit more of a piece, but I guarantee Nicodemus is still confused. He's still confused. Doesn't get it. Doesn't understand. Everyone was born of water on their birth date. It takes being born again of the Spirit or you can't enter that supreme, powerful rule of God. And the word enter, it means to arise or to come into. Come into. It's one thing to see. It's another to enter. It's more like, you know how we read. We can see with our eyes the words on the page in the word. It's one thing to read. It's even another thing to understand. And then it's another thing to do. There's three levels. You can see, then you can even understand, but are you doing? So that's, it's three levels. Many profess, oh, I just want to thank God. Give all thanks to Him for this award. For this rated R movie that I just did. And I blasphemed his name all throughout it. And I did it because man that paycheck was nice. See it doesn't work. You can profess. You can say but what are you doing? A amen. Enter. 
The Greek definition, again, is to arise or come into. After you perceive, you're supposed to enter. You're supposed to make room for God and, sh- and make no room for your sin conscience at that point. That is the supreme, powerful rule of God on your heart. It's where I'm only making room for him, for his ways, what he says. And my sin conscience, I'm pushing that aside from here on out. Now, it's going to battle against you. That's why we have to renew our mind with the word. It's going to keep battling. It's going to keep coming. We've got to renew our mind to keep Jesus is on this throne. There is nobody else on this throne. That includes my sin conscience. It is gone in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm. See, with that, just before we move on, your sin conscious, I mean, it's, it's coming at you. It's coming at you. But I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation, it says. Paul, that's what he said. I don't, I, I don't have time for that. That's got to go aside. I've got to rely on my second birth, not my first. I'm born again now. I'm born of the Spirit now. So my water birth from the very beginning, from my, uh, from my mom, that was important. It got things started. I was created in His image that you can't discount that. My body is important, but I need my spirit to be born again. I need my soul to be born again. And so after that, I'm relying on that. I'm not relying on my natural self. Amen? Mm. See, when you got saved, you didn't just get the Spirit of God. You got the birthright to rule over your flesh. Mm. Amen? It takes power to rule over your old man, church. In other words, it takes grace to stand on who you are. See, the law, it's that set of rules. And it will always bring you back to your, to your old man. We're no longer under the law any longer. Mm, amen. I like that. So we live in, we're living by grace. I'm supposed to live by grace, which is the empowerment to do his will on this earth in his kingdom it's his empowerment. So what is grace? One, we'll look at this statement here. Grace is the empowerment to reveal him in spite of you. In spite of you. Now normally when I preach from John 3, I, I, I stop at this verse. And I talk about grace a little bit more and we'll go into something else. Because we know, and I've taught on grace many times, I feel like I'm a grace preacher. That's how I would describe myself. Grace is the empowerment to reveal him in spite of you. Grace is the empowerment. It empowers you to do. It empowers you to do. To do what? To do what's written in the word of God. To do what's written, what God said. Now normally I would stop, but we need to go on a little further. Verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do Do not marvel. That I said to you, you must be born again. See, he's already, Jesus knows what's in their minds. When someone asks him a question, he already knows what they're thinking. He knows where they're at. He knows this is new because he's coming down and he is establishing his kingdom. Right? And so he knows. So he's got to assure this guy and tell this guy he's probably seeing his face. See, we're getting what's written. We don't see what's on his face. Nicodemus on his face is probably going, what in the world? Say what? Huh? You know? You know how you're telling somebody something and they just cock their head and look at you like, oh. I do that people different ones in my house. I'm talking to them and I see the head cocked a little. I said, You're not are you following me? <laughs> are you understanding what I'm saying? So I say it a different way to make sure. I need feedback. I need you to say, Oh yeah, okay, I need you to wait. Yeah, okay, I get what you're saying. See, I see so many of you in here this morning, especially because I've taught a lot of this before. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're there. You're right there. You're with me. But here's Jesus. He's like, do not marvel at this. You don't need to marvel. Don't worry about it. It's okay. That's what he's saying. And then he says, the wind blows, in verse 8, where it wishes, 
and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes, so is everyone who is born of the Spirit. And right here is where we want to stay for a moment. The wind blows where it wishes. Jesus' idea to Nicodemus is, you don't understand everything about the wind, but you see its effects. What happens when a big storm comes and blows on your house and the, and the, and the door frame gets goofed up or the door hinge, you know, it comes up? You see the effects of the wind. You see the effects. Do you know where it all's blowing? Do you know where it's going? No. Do you understand the wind, why it even blows? Do you get it? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever contemplated how, how is wind? How does it work? Look that up and have the scientists explain. You'll still be confused, just like Nicodemus. Go ahead, I dare you. This week, you will still be lost. Do you know why? Because the scientists don't fully understand wind. That, do they fully understand? Our, oh, look, they can say all these things. They got all that. But do they fully understand all of it? No. Why? Because God created it. They don't understand everything about the earth. They don't understand all of it. They can explain it, and they got little you know, explanations why the earth spins and all this and gravity and blah, blah, blah. And, we got all this, and that's wonderful. It's great. Do you fully understand why? Do you really fully understand gravity? Do you really get it? Why it's there? What its purpose? Why, it, why it's the way it is? You know, you watch this science fiction stuff. You know what's funny? Uh, these guys, they go to this other planet, and they get off, and they have to wear special suits and masks, you know, because of the atmosphere or whatever, you know, breathing it, because humans can't breathe in this atmosphere. And then on another science fiction show, they get to this other planet, and the gravity's different. There's still some gravity, but it's different. It's like, it, it's, it's a lot heavier, so you have to have a better bone structure. And the people who live on this planet or the creatures or whatever, boy, they can handle that gravity because they can't handle it on this planet and blah, blah, blah. And they just come up with all this stuff. And it's really kind of neat. I like that science fiction stuff. It's cool. But you'll never fully understand that. The people who created it, do they really know what they're... No. They're just making neat stuff. And it looks cool. And it sounds cool. But fully understanding creation, we will not know until we get to heaven. Amen? Mm. Do I fully understand why God only made me five, seven, and three quarters of an inch tall? Nope. But I'm going to ask him why he didn't make me a little taller so I could be an NBA player. I mean, you know, when I get there, I'm kidding. You must be born. The wind blows. So everyone who is born of the Spirit... Just like the way the wind is. The wind blows. So Jesus wanted Nicodemus to know, you don't have to understand it all. Born of the Spirit. It's the Spirit of God that gives us life and peace. That's something we can understand. I know that if I'm born of the Spirit and I am following this, what the Spirit is saying, the Spirit of God, He's giving me life and He's giving me peace. He gives me comfort when I need comfort. He gives me strength when I need strength. He is there for me through it all. It's the spirit that brings us through trials and tribulations. The thing that we go through, the things we don't understand on the earth, why this is happening, why I got sick, why so-and-so got sick, why so-and-so passed away. Why, uh, Amen? I don't, I don't understand all of that. I don't get all that. Man can try to understand. They can try to explain it. I look it up, I Google it all, and I still don't get it. And I'm not. But all I know is I don't care as long as the Spirit of God is leading and directing and guiding me. He can give me all I need. He gives me all that pertains to life and godliness. That's it. But I've got to be in tune with what His Spirit is saying. I've got to be in tune with what the Word is saying. So what do I need to get a fresh perspective on life, on things right now? My life this week, this month, this year, 2023... What do I need to get a fresh perspective? The answer is whatever, whatever the Spirit wants to show us. And I don't have to understand it all. I don't need to understand it all. 
Wherever the wind blows, it's okay. But what kind of wind am I talking about? The wind of the Spirit. If the wind of the Spirit were to usher into this place right now, because I don't feel it really strong here this morning, I'll just tell you, like we did you know, a couple weeks ago, three weeks ago, whatever, it was a lot stronger than it is right now. I'm just, I'm just going to tell you. I don't understand that. You know what? I might talk to God about that later. He may not let me know. I have no idea. All I know is I'm still going to preach what he showed me this week. That, amen? Because I don't go by how I feel. How I feel is inconsequential. See, I didn't go how I feel, felt this morning either when I woke up at 7. Because if I did that, I wouldn't be here right now. How many can testify to that? There are some hands. Oh, well, we got some prayer requests here uh, afterwards then. Lord, I just thank you that we'd all be able to sleep good, wake up refreshed, ready, just ready to go. How many just love that bed? Come on. Love that pillow. I do. At 7 this morning, I know I did. But I knew God had something for me to do this morning, so I got up. Amen? You have to get up. Not all of us can be like Brother Landy. My, my goodness. Oh, I know you like your sleep, but my goodness, I don't know how you get up when you get up. That man is posting that stuff on Facebook. God's got to miss. See, God's got something for him to do. He gets up and puts it on every, every, every morning on Facebook. He puts those scriptures out and, and gives you a word every morning. Every morning. Whew. That's good. That's good. And do and you know why he's doing that? Because that's what, the, that's what the Spirit's saying. That's the way the wind is blowing, the wind of the Spirit. See, I don't go through life just going, well, just wherever the wind blows, it's all good. If uh, this happens, oh, I don't care. what. No, that's not what I'm talking about. It's the wind of the Spirit. And whatever the Spirit shows, I'm good. And how do I know if it's the Spirit or not? Does it line up with the Word? If it doesn't line up with the word, that wind that's blowing over there that they're calling the spirit, that's another Jesus. That's something else. That's not, no. If it doesn't line up with the word, I'm not going with it. So what do we need to do to see, perceive what the spirit is showing us? Now, for all those who like three-point messages, I'm going to give you three quick points. So those that are taking notes, you can write your three-point. Here's your three-point sermon right here. Number one, seek God. How many times have we ever seen this in a three-point sermon? Probably, oh, I don't know. If you've been in church for a while and you've been listening, whether here or somewhere else online, somebody's got that in their point. That's for sure. Seek God. All right? Proverbs 8, 17 says, I love those who love me and those who seek me. How? Diligently will find me. See, with this New Year's resolution stuff and we've got all that working out, you got to be diligent with that stuff. you got to be faithful. you got to be on it. You're going to get up and you're going to do your thing. And you've got to be do it. you got to do it all year long. There was only one time in my life. Well, no, there was a couple. I, we did some video stuff, right? I'm sitting there doing the video stuff, uh, working out, doing this fun stuff, doing boxing and kicking. And the guy was telling me what to do. And then I was like, oh, whew, that was great. That felt good. And he's like, get your chair over. I'm like, oh, no, not this one. So I get down on my chair and I got to do those dips and get those triceps. Man, those things burn. Woo! I didn't like those. But there was one time, the first time I, I, I really knew that I, I had worked out without using sports. That didn't count because I was really in shape then. But when I, I a three month period, and I was working at the gym with a personal trainer, and uh, I was starting to get cut. I was feeling really good about myself. Like, this is great. This is the best I ever felt. And then I got some other stuff happening, responsibilities and distractions, and it got me out of going to the gym. Once I was done with the personal trainer, and the personal trainer was my accountability. And I said to my accountability, I can't do this right now. I'll come back. But then I never came back. Okay? Dad knows. <laughs> he was there. <laughs> right? So I never came back. Your accountability is the Spirit. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. And we've got to make sure that we're not telling the Holy Spirit, well, I can't, can't make that today. Can't do that today. 
that doesn't feel too good. I don't really like doing dips on the chair. I don't like that. And the Spirit's prompting and saying, I need you to get up and come over here and talk to so-and-so. See, that's the dips. The stuff that burns. It doesn't feel like, it's like it, it makes you uncomfortable. It's like, oh, okay, I got to go talk to so-and-so. And that's what the Spirit's saying, but you're saying, I don't like that. Church, I know, I've been there. I've done this. I've been through this. I don't preach anything much that I, that I don't understand. I, I, I'm there. And so, when the Spirit is saying, do this, do that, I have to do it. And you can't recognize the voice of the Spirit without, number one, seeking God. And then, number two, be willing to hear his voice. See, I can seek God and I can understand about his voice and I can hear it and all of that, but I can also shove it aside. I can take a week off, a day off. But we've got to be willing to hear his voice. So I can seek him, seek him diligently, but now I've also I've got to be willing just like I was willing at 7 this morning to not hit the snooze button and stay in bed. I had to get up, get in there, get a shower, make sure I'm here at 8 o'clock so we can set all this stuff up. And, you know, I ran the cables over. And thank God, Rob put the speakers up on the stands this morning for me. My neck's a little sore this, this morning. So Rob was like, I got it, you know. He put those up. Amen. He's like, okay. Trust me, he's got it going on. So the first part, though, of willing, so I hope I didn't embarrass you, brother, but I appreciate your setup and your help, and I appreciate the playing on the guitar. Is this man awesome or what? And, and Justin, Pastor Justin, come, come on. Amen. You know, him and Pastor Justin up here by himself, didn't they sound good this morning with all those instruments and everything? Wasn't that great? Yeah, so, uh, but I, I just love it. The praise and worship is just wonderful. But we come in here and we set up, and my kids come, and, and, and Justin's kids come. And we come in here and we set up. And i got something to do. I've got to be here. And am I, I'm willing to do that. Now, am I willing to hear his voice? The first part of that word willing is will. And Jesus gives us the example of what we should do with our will. In the garden, before he was taken away to be crucified, Jesus said, Father, in Luke twenty two forty two, Father, if it is your will... Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will. Not my will, but yours be done. Now, Jesus is the example. In other words, it's not my will, it's his will. And when I know what his will is, which for me is to come here and be here at 8 o'clock and set this up and be here and talk to you right now, because I know that's his will, that became my will, and I was willing. I listen and I come. Amen? Amen? That's how it works, and that's how it works for you, and that's why you're here, and you're sitting in the seat, or that's why you're listening online, because you know you're supposed to, and you need to, and you need to hear this message, and you got to get it, and you got to get a fresh perspective for 2023. you got to seek God, be willing to hear his voice. Amen? David Guzik, he said this about this uh, verse here. He says, a sinless man battled Satan, sin, self, and temptation in a garden and lost saying, my will, not yours, be done. And the loss impacted all mankind. I'm going to ask Adam about that. Oh. The second sinless man battled Satan, sin, self, and temptation in another garden and won, saying, not my will, but yours be done. And its impact touches people from every tribe and tongue. That's awesome. And so, am I willing? Not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours be done. Every single day. I'm not taking a day off. I'm taking a day off. I don't take a day off from who I am. Look, every day when I wake up, I'm a hall. I am, I am Tony Hall II. A.K.A. T.J. Okay? Every single day. Every day. I can't change that. Why would I want to change who I am in the Lord? Every day I need to be willing. 
Jesus is our example. And because of what Jesus has done for him, done for us, we should give up our will for Father God. Amen. Number three, pay attention. Pay attention. And I know this is kind of similar. Now, see, I got to be willing to hear his voice. I can say, look, I so many times, and the reason why this is a little different, I had to put this one in there is because I can be willing to hear his voice. After I've sought him, I, I seek him, and I'm willing, and I begin to go through my week, and I'm willing to hear the voice of God, and I'm, I am. I'm hearing the voice of God some, and he's kind of leading me. I feel that prompting on the inside, and that's how you hear. You're going by that prompting on the inside, and I know it's lining up with the, with the word of God, and I know it's not my voice, because, and I know it's not Satan, because he wouldn't be telling me to go say something good to that person. It's got to be God. It's that feeling on the inside, right? And we all know that, but... We've got to pay attention. We've got to pay attention. We could be all in, law, in left field, just totally lost. Because we're distracted. Because there's so many distractions that are out there. Church, it's hard to hear the voice of the Spirit when I'm sitting there playing a video game and online. Now, and I do that, and I love doing that. But I can't do that all the time. Because I can't do that and hear the Lord at the same time. Now, has the Lord used me online in between my video game playing while I'm online and I talk to people and stuff? Yes, that is true. But when I'm in the middle of switching guns because I'm going to shoot the other guy, I'm not listening to the Spirit. I'm trying to figure out, okay, let me get, okay, I got my AR right now. I'm going to breach this building. I'm going to come, I got to switch to my SMG and then I'm going to come around, flash him, boom. Flash, boom. They're down, both down. Next room. You know, I'm telling my buddy, buddy, I got him. I can't be thinking. <laughs> I'm not thinking in the spirit right now. I'm too busy shooting people in the face. <laughs> yes, your pastor just said that. Don't worry, it's online. Okay. It's just, it's okay. But I've got to pay attention. I've got to pay attention. In John chapter 14, verse 26 says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. Somebody say all things. And bring to your remembrance all things. Somebody say all things. That I said to you. Every bit of it. He wants to teach you all things. And see, when I read this here, Yes, I see that he's going to teach you the things that are in his word, in, in the word. But when I hear all things, I hear more than that. I hear more than what's just written in the word. I went with a young man years ago. He said, my girlfriend uh, has a friend and uh, she's not saved. But she's been questioning and wondering. I've been talking to her, you know, about the Lord but, you know, I just don't know how to answer some of those questions, you know, that she has. Would you be willing to come with me and we sit down and talk with her? Because she said she'd be willing to talk to you. And I said, sure. And so I went with him and went over to uh, her house. And we sat down and she got us something to drink. And I'm sitting there and we, we began to talk. And, and I said, you know, so, I, you know, hey, he told me you had some questions. And she said, yeah. And so she began to ask questions. And did I have the answer for all of her questions? No. But I felt the Spirit of God in the room as she began to ask the questions. And the Spirit began to give me answers to things. I didn't even know I, I, would, I could talk that way. I didn't even know. I had no idea I'd have the answer for something like that. And the Lord just began to show me. It was stuff that's, it, you know, it's not in the Word. It lines up with the Word, but it's not like all spelled out like, you know, and she was a asking these questions. And I, 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 at first, I was like, whoa. And then I just felt the Spirit just talking to me. Speak. And I just began to talk. And it wasn't my words. It was almost just like His words speaking. And when we were done, I began to see, you know, she was, you know, changing. Her face was softening. She wasn't so hard. And, you know, no, she did not pray that prayer at the end of that conversation. But she changed the way she thought about a lot of things. And afterwards, I, we're driving home. I was driving home with, you know, with him, my friend that brought me there. And he said, man, I just, I did not have those answers. 
you know, how in the world did you do that? I said, man, I didn't have those answers either. I said, that was the Lord. He goes, man, praise God. I said, you know, I, he said, how did you, what, how do you do that? And I said, well, when you told me to come, what I did is I asked some others to pray for us. And I began to pray too. See, they asked Jesus the same question. They said, how, do you, how did you do that? The disciples came and said, how did you cast these spirits out? He said, this kind only comes by prayer and fasting. And we've got to pray. That's the seeking God part. We seek God. We're willing to hear his voice. And then we pay attention when he's speaking. Let's all stand. The Holy Spirit will teach those who are willing and those who are paying attention. Go ahead and just stop that music for a minute, if you would, please. I just We got to pay attention because of the pull of so many other voices. There's so many voices. And there's many things we don't understand. There's so many things I don't understand. I need the Spirit of God to show me. Things that the Spirit hasn't shown me. And I need to understand. I need to know them. I need the Lord. I've got to seek Him and I've got to listen. Now I had them stop that music for a moment for a reason. I want you here to do something with me. So there's times where when I'm trying to hear the Lord, and then there's, there's just, there's noise. There's just noise. And sometimes silence makes me uncomfortable. And it's, it's, it's weird. And I began to think about that, and I was asking the Lord about that. Why is this silence bugging me? Earlier this week, there was a time frame where everybody was working. They were gone from the house. Everybody was at work. And I was there alone, and the dog, he was sound asleep. And I was sitting there behind my computer, and after that last person left the house, and I was typing, and I stopped typing, and then I just sat there. And it was so silent. And for a moment, it made me a little uncomfortable, you know, because I wasn't used to it. I'm, I, I just wasn't used to silence. But I closed my eyes, and I just... And, I, and I've done this from time to time, and it had been a while where it was just totally silent. And I was just saying, I said to God first, I said, Lord, I, I just want to hear your voice. And here's the thing, you know, if the TV's on, and I usually, when I pray, I have my music on. But see, sometimes you've got to even turn that off. Sometimes you've got to turn every single little thing off. And you've just got to be real quiet and listen to the Lord. Now, is that written in the Word? I don't know, guys. Is that in the Word somewhere? I don't think so. Uh, there's be still and know that I'm God. I mean, we got a scripture like that, but I don't even know the context right now. I have to go look it up. Here's what, here's what I know. I'm just telling you this is what I've done, and it's worked before. That's all I know. And so for, for, for me, sitting there in that room, I just closed my eyes after saying, Lord, I... I want to hear your voice. And my two lips were closed. And there was no noise. There was no nothing. Eventually in my neighborhood, I heard, heard a car go by. And that was it. And I kept sitting there and just, just listening, waiting to hear the voice of the Lord. And so this morning, and this is going to be awkward for a Sunday morning even, because we just, we don't do this. We don't do this. But we've got to pay attention because of the pull of so many other voices. In our lives, on our daily, we've got to pay attention. Now, this is just one way. It's not, you know, the way or anything like that. The Lord has spoke to me in so many ways. 
He has spoken to me when I've done, you know, have my music on with praise and worship. He has spoken to me during worship here. He has spoken to me backstage when I was reading my notes. He spoke to me during the week when I was reading the word. He spoke to me when I was getting a drink of water. He's spoken to me when I've gotten something to eat. I mean, just on and on and on and on. I've heard the Lord's voice. I've heard his promptings. Walk outside, walk to my car, see the neighbor across the street, and there's a prompting to go talk to him. So I go talk to him. It's just on and on and on. I could sit here and just go on and on and on the different ways that the Lord has spoken to me at the different times and what was going on and the things I could actually hear with my ears. But see, in a moment, what we can do is we can close it all and we won't be able to hear anything with our natural ear. And we just focus on God. I just put my mind on Him. And then what is the Lord saying? We're not going to do it for long, but I want us to do it for a minute or for a few moments, whatever. And I want us to close our eyes and just focus on the Lord. And after that, guys, in the back, you know, when I get started back up again, you can put the music back on. So let's just do that right now. Let's close our eyes and say to the Lord, Lord, I'm willing. On the inside, we're saying, I'm willing to hear your voice. And right now, I'm paying attention. in the back and go and put that music on if you'd like. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for your voice. I thank you that you speak to each one of us in a special way. And maybe you're here this morning and you just heard him during that silence, but maybe you're hearing him now. Lord, whatever it is you want me to do this week, I'll do it. I'm willing. I'm willing to hear your voice. Church, I'm just going to talk to him for myself right now. And if you want to talk to him, if you agree with how I'm doing it, you know, you say those words too to God. You just be in agreement. I just feel like I need to pray for myself right now. Lord, there's so many times where I get distracted. I'm distracted by the things that are around me, the things in this world. Lord, I, there's, there's times I get distracted by the enemy's voice and what he's telling me. Lord, right now, I lay down every distraction and I come against every distraction and command it to go right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you this week you will give me the strength to not be distracted. Lord, that my ears would be open, ready to hear your voice. Mm. Lord, that I would hear, I'd be ready to do what you say at a moment's notice. Today, this week, this month, this year of 2023, Lord, I thank you that my light will shine. As your word says in Matthew 5, 16, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Lord, I thank you that my light would shine, that I wouldn't put my light out because I'm too busy doing what I want to do. Lord, I just thank you that it's your will and not my will. And I say your will be done, not mine, on this earth. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for a prayer request right now. And then we'll 
pray for other needs as well. But I want to lift up Ron and for Shonda and the Williams family. For Shonda's dad, Jim Ray, which you've probably seen him before. In, in the back, he has come. And uh, he passed away on Friday, or yesterday, yesterday. That's what it was, yesterday. And uh, I want to pray for them right now, that God would give them peace and comfort. Lord, right now, we just lift up Ron and Freshonda to you, and David and Dominic, the whole family, Father. Lord, I thank you for your comfort that would come during this time, that you would give them peace in their spirits. Lord, I thank you that Jim Ray, he knew you. And he was your servant. And I thank you that he is with you now. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that you bring comfort to all of the family, extended family, for Shonda's sister, Tracy, just everyone, Father God. All of his friends, those that knew Jim Ray. We give you praise, glory, and honor for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you're here this morning and you have a need that you know Jesus, you, you need Jesus to meet that need, I want you just to raise your hand right now. And I'm going to pray for that need. You just speak it out to the Lord. And we're just going to pray right now. One big prayer. Father, right now, you have a need for 2023. This year, you have a need. We're going to pray for it. Lord, right now, all the hands that are raised that has a need for this year, for 2023, Lord, I thank you that you meet every single need. In Jesus' mighty name. Supernaturally, everyone right now that has their hand up right now, you meet that need in Jesus' name. And those of us, that we all of our needs are met. Lord, I thank you that we would be the conduits to meet even some of these needs and meet others' needs as your spirit leads and your spirit guides in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, I just thank you, and we just call in finances where finances are needed. We call in job promotions where job promotions are needed. We just call in right now family members that need to know the Lord, Lord, that they would come to know you in Jesus' name. As your word says, that me and my house, they will be saved. They will be, not a maybe, not a might. They're saved in my house. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can we give the Lord a hand? He is good. Amen. Amen.